To me, one of the key components for when wrestling is at its best is that it can keep the audience guessing. They can get the audience hooked, emotionally invested, but all the while, they can't wait to watch your next pay-per-view. They can't wait to watch your next TV episode because they don't know what's coming. They're not sure, especially when you talk about today's wrestling environment where so much of it is either reported via rumors or people throw out there as ideas or reports, or we're just able to frankly piece it together and say two plus two equals that sucks. You know, it's rare that we get that vibe, that energy of you really don't know, like that spontaneity. It's such a good feeling that we get so infrequently with wrestling. It's true. Especially good spontaneity. Like somebody could drop their trunks and take a shit in the corner in the middle of the, in the ring. You know, that could be a surprise. Spont spontaneous but it doesn't make it a good surprise or good spontaneity. So as I look ahead to Saturday night and SummerSlam, I'm looking at this John Cena versus Roman Reigns main event and it's got me wondering. It's got me a bit unsure of things. And it's an interesting and welcome feeling to have. Because I wonder if they're actually going to follow through and have John Cena beat Roman Reigns, our tribal chief, the head of the table, Saturday at SummerSlam. And before you immediately dismiss it and say there's no way, number one, Breakfast Club business indicates never eliminate that possibility from the conversation. You can't. Roman knows how to play them politics games now, but John Cena is one of the true masters of it, of all times. But when you talk about building a Mount Rushmore of WWF slash E, like backstage politicians. John Cena is on that Mount Rushmore with Hogan, with Stone Cold Steve Austin. And for the benefit of not pissing anybody off, but pissing everybody off, you probably have five heads on there. You got Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels. I mean, he's in that elite list, that creme de la creme of backstage politicians. We know that to be true. And some of you are going to say, well, what about Triple H? Yeah, he is the mountain. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> praise God. Um, but when you think about this match coming up, like, it's possible. Because you wonder, even though WWE will still continue to pretend like they're not paying attention to AEW, they don't care about AEW, they don't view AEW as competition. We all know whether or not we believe that to be true or not, even though a lot of us know that's crap. As arrogant as WWE is, we know some of the things that they've done, like they've done it with a focus on AEW. We know just more importantly how petty Vincent K. McMahon is. Like petty level Vince, we know what that looks like. We understand that. Like, you think a normal, logical person would say, okay, I'm booking this show. This wrestler is wrestling in this important match in their hometown. You want to send the people home for the hometown guy or gal in a good mood. Let's have that person win. Vince will have that person lose or get screwed over or try to get heat. Ha ha! That's such good shit! Like, that's the type of petty level you're dealing with here with Vince. So when you see something like a Ric Flair requesting his release and working with Andrade down at Triple Mania and, you know, certainly probably headed to AEW. Is there any doubt that Vince might have a thought in his mind that, well, shit, we got John Cena, kid. It's tied with Ric Flair at 16, damn it. Let's get him to 17 so that way we can sit there and say John Cena's won the most titles. And then we could advance this decade and a half long propaganda of how he's the GOAT of WWE of all time. You know I'm right. You absolutely know Vince is petty enough to be able to say, fuck Ric Flair, I'm going to give Cena the strap because I want him to be a 17-time champion. I want him to have the most world title reigns. And then it could continue to advance our agenda about how he's the GOAT of WWE. 
You all know I'm right about that. I cannot eliminate that from being a possibility on Saturday night. I also cannot eliminate the possibility that, especially if Cena is going to be around longer than SummerSlam, there might be some thought by folks within WWE that you have to have Roman lose at some point, somehow, some way, in order to maintain some type of viability or believability in future opponents facing Roman, saying he's got to beat somebody, and you put somebody like Cena in that spot, he's you, somebody you look at as a logical person that you say is over with the fans enough, is a guy that is believable enough that he could go in there, even if he's been gone for a damn year and a half doing movies, he could come in and people know that he could legitimately beat a Roman Reigns. Not legit in terms of shoot fight, but in the WWE landscape, although of course it's fucking five knuckle shuffle, five moves of doom, decade of destruction, John Cena. He could beat fucking anybody. And just because you might point to the fact of, well, he's lost to some of these other guys in recent years. Well, he started jobbing the guys when it was too fucking late and it didn't matter. And even then, you also come back to the piece of, he did lose to Roman a few years ago. Like, they might want to get that victory back. They might want to maximize upon what they feel is this a bit of a nostalgia run for John Cena, helping move a needle for them a little bit. They might say having Roman just beat Cena again doesn't help anybody. They could sit there and say, you know, we kind of like the thought of Cena carrying the strap maybe to the next pay-per-view or a couple of pay-per-views and having Roman be an aggressor and chasing him. They might also be looking at this again from a petty level standpoint since you have Cena on SmackDown right now. You might be trying to undercut Rampage on Friday nights. Again, trying to be petty towards AEW even though they're on, you know, consecutive time slots. You get my point though. Trying to take away attention from WWE. No doubt that if John Cena won the championship on Saturday night, became a 17-time WWE World Champion, that's going to be making headlines. That will be news. That is something that will be all over the place in mainstream media. It absolutely will be. Because they'll be talking about Suicide Squad and Fast 9 star John Cena wins WWE Universal title or is now WWE Champion. They'll get it wrong, but you get what I'm saying. I, that'll make the news and that'll be notable. So I could absolutely see them doing it. But that's dumb. Let's not kid ourselves. Well, sure, you could say you don't want to bring somebody back and every time they have a match, when they haven't been around for a long time, they lose because at some point in time that does diminish the value, diminish the return. I agree with that. How stupid does it make the rest of your fucking roster look if none of them could beat them up to and including an edge? But a John Cena waltzes right in from the movies and beats your guy that you've been talking about as the tribal chief, the head of the table for a fucking year now. How much sense does that make to have John Cena be the one to beat him? Like, this is the type of shit you would have expected from Decade of Destruction, Decade of Doom, um, John Cena, but goddamn. Like, now? That's stupid. Especially if you're trying to talk about as a company, you want to build stars, which you don't. You clearly don't. And all of your actions indicate you fucking don't. Or, worst of all, you forgot how to do it, which we know you did for the most part. Here's one of the few guys that you've protected pretty well, that you've promoted very well, you've booked very well. Now you're in a spot where you got this top guy. You need to give him this notch on his belt in this spotlight at this moment. Furthermore, if you're trying to set him up to lose to somebody else down the road, like a Big E money and bank guy or somebody else along those lines, having a John Cena beat him is going to take some of the steam away from that. It absolutely will. You want Roman as the baby face here. And I say baby face in quotation marks because some of you want to be haters and some of you don't want to see the reality staring you in the face. But... In this position, with this type of head of the chief, head of the table, tribal chief character, like he shouldn't be losing all the time. And if he does lose, you want it to matter, and you want it to be for somebody that's worthy and deserving. John Cena winning is just bullshit business as usual in a lot of ways. Bring back the old guy to prop up the show because we can't build fucking stars, and then sometimes we're going to put the old guy over. Like it's just dumb. You put all of this investment in Roman Reigns just to sit there and have him drop the strap to Cena at SummerSlam 
What type of statement does that make about Roman? What type of statement does that make about the rest of the roster? What type of statement does that make about the WWE as a whole? And furthermore, from a pure storytelling standpoint and de building and developing a character standpoint, having your tribal chief or the head of the table lose to Cena in any way at SummerSlam, unless it was like count out or DQ because you're trying to do a return match, then let's talk turkey here. Any other type of thing doesn't advance or build the character as much as Roman beating Cena via submission. John Cena doesn't tap out. John Cena doesn't quit. Hustle, loyalty, respect, you can't see me, all that other fruity pebble bullshit. But the reality is, like, he just doesn't tap out. The only logical answer, the only logical finish here at this point at SummerSlam, if you're doing it as a straight up one time encounter, a straight up one time like big four pay-per-view main event match, which might be the approach here. If that's the case, then Roman's got to make him tap. If it just goes down as a standard match and Roman pins them one, two, three, yeah, it matters and it still has an impact, but frankly, we've been there, done that, we've seen that before. Have John Cena get submitted to the point, not even where he passes out, because you're still protecting the Cena character. You don't need to protect the Cena character at this point. You spent a decade and a fucking half doing that well enough any damn ways. Now's the time to expose that character for the purposes of protecting and building up your current top guy that is there, that is dependable, that is reliable, that is believable. The only way to do that is for him to make John Cena tap out. Right? Bam, in the middle of that ring, no bullshit, come Saturday night. Lots of different ways you can go with this. I'm curious what you guys think. Do you think Cena's winning this belt on Saturday? I can't lie. I'm worried about it. I'm worried about it. I think they'd be dumb to do so. You could make some arguments for it, as I just kind of laid out here. But God, I really hope they're not that fucking stupid. Uh -uh -uh. Nope. You've come this far with Roman Reigns. You do not stop now. You cannot undercut the guy you've been spending a year putting up there as the top dude to have him lose to a guy that hasn't wrestled in almost a year and a fucking half. That cannot happen here. That absolutely positively cannot happen here. You could create the illusion that Cena could have won. You could even do a freaking DQ or a count out. Like I said, if you want to build for a second return match, why the hell wouldn't you? Too often in wrestling, we don't think about the return match and how to build up to and set up that return match. That would be a good thing. And if you told me we got an expansion of this feud and program for a little bit more, cool, I'm down with it. Roman can bury Cena on the mic again, just like he did on SmackDown last week. But having Cena win, that's just a bridge too damn far. It's got to be the head of the table on Saturday. It's got to be our tribal chief, damn it. It's the best thing for business, and yes, even breakfast club business.